My name is Gabriella Falls. I will introduce myself to the patient and obtain consent. Hi, my name is Gabriella Falls. I'm a student nurse at Durham College, and I will be performing your head-to-toe assessment today. Is that okay with you? Yes. Awesome. I will then perform an environmental scan before beginning. I will check the oxygen to make sure it is functioning and that there is tubing and nasal prongs present. I will also check the suctioning to make sure that it also has tubing and there is a yonker present. I will check all the bed breaks on the bed as well as the bed rail that they are working. And I will make sure that the bed rail opposing me is up. I will make sure that there is a call bell present and that the bed is in the lowest position. And that there is no clutter present around the bed. I will then raise the bed to working height as well as the head of the bed to about 45 degrees and begin my assessment. I will provide a general survey upon visiting the patient, noting his consciousness that he is awake and that the position of the patient is in an upright position, his skin color is free of any pallor or cyanosis, and that his face is also calm and not in distress. He is not experiencing any pain or distress because he is also relaxed. I will then begin a subjective inquiry using the PQRSTU method about his symptoms. I will assess for either palliative or provocative symptoms, noting um, what makes it worse, what makes it better, and what provokes the symptoms, the quantity or quality of the symptoms, how many there are based on what the patient explains, so basically just descriptor words, I would never prompt the patient. I would also assess whether the symptoms are radiating or regional, and the patient would let me know if they're only in one place or if they're all over his body, as well as the severity of the symptoms using a pain scale on a level of one to 10, as well as the timing, whether they're continuous or intermittent. And I would try to understand the patient's perception of the symptoms, and they would explain to me what they believe provided the symptoms or what made them worse or better. I would then identify that I have already pre-assessed the vital signs. The patient's temperature is 37.1, which is within the normal ranges of 35.8 to 37.3. I would assess his radial pulse, noting that it was 78 beats per minute, which is within the normal range of 60 to 100 beats per minute. I would also note that his respirations are 17 breaths per minute, which is within the normal range of 12 to 20 breaths per minute. His O2 saturation is also 98%, which is within 95 to 100%, which is also normal. His blood pressure is also 119 over uh, 78, which is within the normal ranges, lowest being 90 over 50 and highest being 140 over 90. I would then assess the patient's orientation to person, place, and time, noting basically if the patient understands what day it is, as well as, sorry, the dog has entered the room, as well as if the person can say their name and their date of birth to assess that they know who they are. Then I would begin to assess the patient's upper extremities. I would notice the symmetry of their upper extremities as well as their color and there is no cyanosis or pallor present. There is no edema present as well, so that is fine. I would also notice the condition of the skin. It is intact with no lacerations or abrasions. I would then ask the patient to grip onto my fingers as tight as he can to assess his muscle strength and it is even bilaterally and strong. You can release, thank you. I would then also note his brachial pulses as well as his radial pulses, and they're even and strong bilaterally. I would then assess his capillary refill, noting that his fingers blanch, and they return back to color within three seconds, which is normal. I would then assess his anterior chest, and I would make sure that it is symmetrical. The contour of the chest, there's no pulsations that are irregular, there are no masses present, I would also assess that his ribs are in a sloping uh, shape downwards. I would also assess that there is an elliptical shape in his thorax and that his costal, rain, um, costal shape sorry, is less than 90 degrees. I would then also assess his respiration quality, making sure that he is breathing in normally, that there is no distress, there is no any accessory muscle use in his uh, accessory muscles, his trachea is also not in drawing, and at this time I would also assess that his trachea is in the midline, and that there is no deviation. I would then also assess that his anterior posterior diameter is also half of the transverse diameter, which it is, so that is normal. I would then palpate his chest for any tenderness or masses, 
and I would ask the patient to let me know using light palpation if he feels any, which he does not. At this time, I would then also take listening to the breath sounds in a five point pattern, asking the patient to let me know, sorry, not asking the patient to let me know, asking the patient to breathe in at each point. breath sounds are clear and there's a good airflow passage. There is no advantageous breath sounds, no crackles or wheezes, so that is normal. At this time, I would also assess if there is any chest tube or any anterior chest dressing that may be present, as well as there is O2 present in case that he has um, nasal cough. Then I would assess the precordium area specifically, noting the, sign, the color of his skin, that there's no cyanosis or pallor present, there is no abnormal pulsations or masses present as well. I would also note the condition of the skin, that it is intact, and that there is no lacerations, abrasions, or scarring. I would then also auscultate his heart sounds in proper order, beginning in his second intercostal space, just right of the sternal border at his aortic valve. And I hear that S2 is louder than S1. I'll then go over to a second intercostal space just right of the sternal border, sorry, just left, and I will listen to the pulmonic valve. S2 is also louder than S1 here. I'll then go down to the third intercostal space on the sternal border, and I will listen to herbs point, and here S1 is equal to S2. I will then go down to the fourth or fifth intercostal space just left of the sternal border, and I will listen to the tricuspid valve and here S1 is louder than S2, and then I will go to the midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space at the mitral valve, and S1 is also louder than S2. Here is also where I feel the maximum impulse, where the apical heart rate is, and I would stay here for one minute to count his beats per minute, noting that it is 78, which matches with my pre-assessment vital signs originally. At this time, if I heard any murmurs, I would use the bell of my stethoscope and I would follow the same pattern. In any area that a murmur was felt, or heard, sorry, I would turn my patient on his left side and I would continue to oscillate in the same pattern. I will then assess his abdomen. I will ask the patient if, how his appetite has been, if he has felt any nausea, any vomiting, his last bowel movement, as well as any diarrhea or constipation, which he has felt none. I will then oscillate for bowel sounds. But before I do that, I'm going to check his um, abdomen for any contour, and I notice that his abdomen is flat. I will assess for any his skin color, so there's no cyanosis or pallor present, as well as the skin is intact with no lacerations or abrasions. There's also no scarring or striae, and there is no swelling present or any irregular pulsations. I will listen in each quadrant, starting in the right lower quadrant, going to the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. Normally you would hear anywhere between 5 and 30 um, vowel sounds per minute, which is what I did here, so that is normal. If I did not hear vowel sounds, I would make sure to listen for a minimum of 5 minutes per quadrant to present that there is an absence of vowel sounds. At this point, I'm going to palpate to feel if there's any masses or tenderness. And if the patient does let me know if there's tender tenderness prior to palpating, I will leave this area to lap as well I will not palpate any pulsing masses. I'll use light palpation with one centimeter, depth only, and the patient does not feel any tenderness, and I do not feel any masses. At this point, I would also assess if he has a Foley catheter, what the urine output is, as well as if the Foley catheter has a size. I would then also assess if he has an ilimi or ostomy bag, as well as any dressings present on his abdomen, which he has none. 
I would have also listened during my occultation for any bruit in the vascular areas of his abdomen, and I felt none, or I heard none, sorry, so we're good. I'm gonna cover the patient up and go to his lower extremities. I'm just gonna ask if you uncross your legs, thank you. At this point, I will inspect his lower extremities for symmetry, symmetry which they are both symmetrical. I'll also assess for any edema, which there is none as well as his skin color, which it, there is no pallor or cyanosis and it's consistent with his upper body, as well as the hair on his legs, is, there's even distribution. And his skin is intact with no lacerations or any scarring. Then I will feel his, his extremities, noting his temperature. It is dry and warm. I will also feel his dorsalis pedis pulse which is strong and equal bilaterally, which means that his posterior tibial pulse as well as popliteal pulse will also be strong, equal bilaterally. I will then place my hand on his lower extremity and dorsiflex and plantar flex his foot, noting that his muscles do move, so he does have adequate muscle strength. I will then test his capillary refill, noting that they blanch and that color returns within three seconds upon releasing his capillary, or sorry, his toes. At that point, I will then assess that he has no dressings present, which he doesn't. And then I will cover up the patient. I'll ask that the patient moves to the edge of the bed. I will assist him in getting up so that I can check his posterior chest. I will assess, if I move just a little bit more, thank you. I'll assess his posterior chest for symmetry and that there is no visual masses or pulsations. I will also assess that the sinus process is vertical in alignment up and down his back. I will then pulse and the sorry, the skin color. There is no pallor or cyanosis. And his skin is intact with no lacerations. I will then palpate for any tenderness on his back and any masses, which none are felt. Awesome. I will then also take for the breath sounds. Ask him to breathe in and out at each point in an eight point sequence. And with two to three points on his lateral sides. Awesome. So his airflow was great. There was uh, clear passage, there was no advantageous breath sounds, crackles, or wheezes. And at this time, I would also assess that there is no dressings present. And then I would turn the, I would return the patient to a comfortable position in the bed, making sure that the bed is in the lowest position. He is comfortable and the call bell is in place. I would then let him know the findings I found today, that they were all normal. If they weren't though, I would then discuss further planning to ensure that he felt comfortable with his symptoms. And then also I would assess any uh, goals for the day to improve his symptoms as well as a discharge plan. And that is it. That concludes my head to toe assessment.